Now that we can see a user profile, we're going to give users the ability to update their profile. And we're going to keep this very basic, but of course you can add as much as you want here. So you can allow the user to enter information about themselves in any way at all. And you can follow the same structure and it will be very easy for you to update this. So to start out, we need to add to our profile controller. Let's just close everything off that we may not need at the moment. And let's focus on adding in these edit methods into our controller. So we need a page that will render the form for a user to be able to fill out their information. So here we're going to say get edit. This is just going to return a view. And of course, with other things that we've done, we have a post version, which will actually store this information in the user's account. So we'll start with get edit and we'll return a view, which is going to be profile.edit. So over in our views here, let's go under profile. We already have our profile index. We're going to create a new file here and we'll call this edit.blade.php. And we'll go ahead and we'll take the template structure from home again, just to save a little bit of time. And we'll get rid of this content in here. So again, as part of the course downloads, you'll have the form uh, data in here. So I'm just going to paste that in and we'll indent this. So we've just got a header and we have a form here with a first name, last name and a location and an update button. So we can check out what this looks like in a moment when we've added our root. So let's update our root in HTTP. So our roots file. So for the user profile, we can add this in. Now, a user can only update their profile if they are authenticated. So I am going to make sure I add in my middleware for auth. That's really important. Otherwise, anyone will be able to access the edit profile page. And this doesn't necessarily matter because they're not going to be able to do anything. They're not signed in, but it's good to actually include this anyway. So let's add our first route, which is being able to view the form. This is going to be profile forward slash edit. Of course, you can choose any name or URL path you want for this. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste this uses and as just to make life a little bit easier. So it's get edit, not get profile. And this is going to be profile.edit. And of course, we have the same thing here for the post. We don't need as. We need to just change the method to post. And we need to change the method name to post edit. So let's add our middleware in now before we forget. So it's middleware and in here it's auth. You can of course create a group around these two for this, but we'll just be a little bit explicit here uh, anyway. So we'll do the same for this one. So if we're not signed in, we're not going to be able to access this or this route. Simple as that. Okay, so let's go and check this out. We'll update our navigation so we can actually click on this button first of all. So let's head over to our navigation here. And down here, if we are signed in, remember, we see this update profile uh, URL. So let's say root profile dot edit. And if we refresh and click on update profile, we see that form. So we can enter a first last name and a location. We can hit update and that will go through to our post route. So let's go over to our edit.blade.php file and we'll update the action to reflect that. So it's root profile.edit and once again we're following the same steps that we did when we registered a user and logged in and things like that so when I hit update now we get a token mismatch exception so we need to add that in so let's go down to the bottom of the form we have a hidden input here the name is underscore token and the value here is session token so let's add in using the session facade and the token method now we can hit update and that's now showing our uh, method that we created for our get or post edit rather. So over on our profile controller for post edit, we need to be able to access our request information. So once again, we say request, request, and then we can start to validate and do everything that we need to do. So we're going to say this validate. First argument is the data. The second is the array of validation options for each field. So we have first underscore name. Now we want this to be alpha and we want it to be a maximum of 50. You can obviously change these rules, do what you want here. So we have a last name as well 
and we're just going to say exactly the same thing. And then we have a location and that's going to be max of 20. And of course here you can allow people to edit their username if you want. You can do whatever you want. If you want more columns in your database, you can you know, create more form fields and allow them to edit anything. So let's kill the page here and just say all OK again, just so we can get through the validation. So here when I hit update, you can see we get all OK. And this is because uh, none of these are required. So this is just working as normal. Um, we don't necessarily have to have a first and last name or location. But if we were to type in, say, 1, 2, and 3, 4, or 4, 5 into there and hit update, we're just redirected back with some errors. So we need to handle these errors now. Okay, so the first thing that we need to take into account is if a user already has a first name, we need to output this in here and here. And if they already have a location, we need to output that in there. So let's just handle that quickly now. So for the first name then, for the text value here, we need to output uh, the database value. And we're going to do something else here that may not make sense at the moment, but it will do a bit later on. So we're going to say auth user first name. So we're going to output that. If that doesn't exist, we're going to output the old request data. And we saw this on the uh, other forms as well. So request old first name. That means that if they have submitted a first name and it's wrong, so one, two, three, then they'll see the request data. And we can copy and paste this down and do that for the last name as well. So let's just change this to last name and this to last name. And then we can do the same for the location as well. So we'll just paste that in there. And we'll change this to location like so. So let's refresh, make sure we didn't break anything. And what I'm going to do is I actually manually update these in the database. So I'm going to change my first and last name and I'm going to set my location to London, UK. And I'll actually see them then appear in there. So if I was to say one, two, three and I hit update, we're now seeing my name appear. So what in fact we need to do is we need to reverse this check. So let's just do this. Um, so we need to check for request old data first. So let's actually get rid of this and we'll start again. So we're going to say if request old first name, we want to output that. Otherwise, we want to output auth user first name. So we'll do this for all of them. We'll just copy and paste these down again. So we have a last name here, last name there, and the same for the location as well. So we'll paste that in change the location so that makes sense in that order so now we still see Alex Garrett London UK but if I was to do one two three the validation fails and we have old request data in there so we can go ahead and output it to what we want okay so now that we've got that let's deal with the actual errors so remember we have this form group uh, div here which can contain has error so we need to check if this particular field has an error so we just say errors has first name. If it does, we output has error. Otherwise, we output nothing. And we can do the same thing for the last name. And we can do the same thing for the location as well. So the first and last name need to be alpha. I think we set the location as a max of 20. So let's go ahead and try and trigger an error on this as well. So let's just enter a load of rubbish in here. Hit update. You can see that these all go red. So the last thing to do on this then is just output the first error for each one. So again, under the input, we have a if statement here. And we'll lend that if there. And we just say if errors has first name. Again, we have our span here within bootstrap, which is help hyphen block. And then in here, we can say errors first. And we'll grab the first first name error. We'll copy and paste this down for our last name. And we'll change this as well. 
and again for the location so it's exactly the same thing just pull this in a little bit and there we go so we would submit similar information through so I'll just do one two three and then I'll just do a load of rubbish in here and there we go so the first name may only contain letters location may not be greater than 20 characters perfect so if I was to hit update here you can see we get all okay and we can actually now store this information so our form is complete so over in the profile controller then instead of dying dumping all okay we're going to access the currently authenticated user that's with auth user and we need to use the auth facade up here as well and we're going to say update and then we pass an array of the columns that we want to update for this user and that is first name and remember we use that request up here input first name and we do the same for the last name and we do the same for the location like so and then obviously once we've done that we can go ahead and redirect them to the profile edit page with some information so we can return a redirect to profile.edit with some info and I'm just going to pull this down onto multiple lines just to make it not too long so your profile has been updated great so let's try and update this then let's just change the first name let's change the last name and we'll change the location hit update there we go so your profile has been updated you can see my details have now been updated there and obviously that's reflected in the database as well so you can obviously extend this and add more fields and then you can go ahead and just append this list of updating Obviously you can change the validation and if you do include any other fields you can add more validation rules as well.